Hi, and welcome back to the next Unity tutorial video. Hey everybody, today we're going to go over uh, scripting in C Sharp and Mono Develop. So, the first thing we're going to do is create a C Sharp script. So, go to Assets, Create C Sharp. And let's call this my script. And after you make the script, you'll see this inspector window open. And it just shows you a uh, preview of the class. And it's it's a skeleton. It starts out as a skeleton when you first make it. So let's go ahead and double click it to launch model develop. So first thing you'll notice is that there's a couple of functions in here, and it's inheriting from something called a model behavior. And a model behavior is just a way of saying that this is uh, attached this can be attached to a game object and what that means is that if we wanted to make a for argument say a cube let's position this at zero 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 we can take the script and add it to our cube as though it were like any other component on it and what that does it allows us to treat this script as though it were the game object itself that it was attached to. So we could say uh, transform and the transform is this part of the game object. Right? So we can say transform dot position equals new. A vector 3 is just a three-dimensional point and we can just say 800. Zero, zero. And if we do that and click play, this cube moves over to 800. Zero, zero. All right. Um, we can access any any of these uh, elements or components by scripting. Um, we can also add components by scripting. So we can say game object, which is a way to reference the entire uh, object. Dot add component, and then this you. you uh, now you want to add a specific type of component, like a rigid body, for argument's sake. So, game object .add component rigid body. And now, if you click play, you'll see that there's a rigid body is now added to this. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you some differences when you write code in uh, model development using Unity. So if we have a public int called my int, and we set this int equal to zero, and then we just printed using the print command uh, my int, right? So if we just do this, and it's going to appear down in this corner, which is your debugger, and you'll see it says zero. Now if we go over to our cube and we'll see this field is now visible and it says zero and we can type in here and place 10 and now if we click play it will say 10 and this happens because this is a public field so it gets read in to the editor and it is displayed to the user in the uh, in the inspector view if it was private then this field will disappear. So you can make some public variables that you can have to apply to different objects. So say we had another cube that was at zero zero zero, and we drag the same script to it. Save that. Now this one I'm going to say five. This one I'm going to say 10, and now it prints 5 and 10. Alright, so we can also, instead of just printing it, we can use this value to move the cube. So we can say transform dot uh, position equals new I am
And now if you click play, it'll go to 10, which is where we had last set it. So, we can do all sorts of things now. So, the transform function has a property called translate. Transform.translate. And this moves a transform by a specific value of vector, of vector 3. So we can say my int 0, 0. And now if we play it, we will see this cube move off into the distance really fast. So in order to get it so that this cube is in time with the frame rate of the game, we can times this value by time dot delta time. And now if you click play, this cube moves off. And we can lower this to 3. Click play. And now it just slowly moves away. Alright, so we can get some rudimentary movement doing that. Um, we can also uh, create a cube underneath it. Drop this cube, and I'm going to drag the same script to it. And in here, I'm going to specify transform dot scale equals new uh, my int one one. So now I'm going to change this guy's scale by 5. So you can see that this guy is now wider than the one on top of it. And we can even add other variables so that we can control this better. And we can say x scale. And we can say that this is 5. And the other one is 0, so it becomes flattened. And call that 1. And then let's go ahead and create another C sharp script called my, my additional script. And so you can take another script and drag it to an object, and it will appear in the inspector just like the other one did. So I double click that to open it up. And all this script is going to do right now is it's just going to add a component. And we're just going to add a rigid body. So now if we click play, one cube falls on top of the other. So scripts can also create objects. So if we go here, we can say game objects g equals new game objects. And so if we do that, this will create two two new game objects because there are two things with the script attached to it. You can also create primitives this way. Dot create primitive. A primitive is like a cube similar to a plane. So we're just going to create some cubes. And now there are two cubes. Or four cubes. Now there's something called a prefab. And prefabs can be created by scripting. But you need to put them within a specific folder called the resources folder. Resources. So in here, we're going to go ahead and create a uh, capsule. And we're going to put a script onto it. So create a new script, call it capsule. So you can drag this capsule script to capsule. And then let's also create a material which is uh, the 
uh, color that we want to change or texture that we want to apply. So we're just going to drag this to here. So now this guy's red. So a prefab is something that you can, it's a predefined uh, object. So we can take this capsule, drag it into our resources, and now it turns blue in the its hierarchy and it has a little box around it. And that means that it's been prefabbed. So let's go ahead and delete this in the hierarchy. And you can, add, you can just go and drag the same thing out and it has all the thing, same things that were attached to it. So, let's go ahead and create this from our script. And from here, let's go to my additional scripts. We're going to go ahead and say game object capsule prefab equals resources, which is the same name as the folder dot load. Now the path, since there's no other subfolders, is just going to be capsule. And then you have to say as a game object. So this will load into this structure the prefab as a game object. And then we can say equals and then there's a specific function that goes along with this and this is only usable in model behaviors called instantiate and we're going to say capsule prefab because it's asking for a object the original object which is prefab and then it's asking for a position which is just a vector 3 we're just going to set this to 0 0 0 and it's also asking for something called a quaternion which is just a rotation, but we're just going to use identity, which is pretty much zero, zero, zero. And oh yeah, and this also has to be as a game object. Uh, sure. All right. So now, if you click play, there's our capsule, and it's a clone of our prefab. It has all the same things it even has its scripts that we can now change and we can just say uh, transform dot translate vector three one times and we can do that and now, click play, and this cube will move across. And prefabs are a very powerful thing. You can lay out an entire scene like this. Or let's take this cube and drop it into that cube. So now we have a high, small hierarchy of cubes, and we can even prefab this. So now there's a hierarchy of uh, cubes, and we can delete these, and then putting them back in, play, behaves the same. Thanks for watching and I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, click on any of the links on the screen to view our other videos and be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you.